Here we go, opening moments of Demon Slayer. I'm hearing so much about this show. This is a scene where everything is going right. It's abundantly clear everything's fine. <sighs> Looks beautiful. This is like the best animated How in the world snow I've ever like seen. This happen? I won't let you die. Oh no. That was a lot for a first scene. <laughs> and flashback? Tanjiro. Tanjiro. Let me clean you up. You know, you really don't have to go. Sister All is kind. Sister dangerous. is caring. Are you going to town again today? I'm coming with you! Ugh. Is this all his family? This is just setting up for the tragedy to come. Oh, come on, Mom! Is that his mom? Damn, Mom looks young. <laughs> I thought that was his sister. I want to come with you. I promise I'll help out. That's the sister. That's very generous of you, Hanako. Or not? Hanako. Sorry, Shigeru. Shigeru. Definitely gonna call him Shigure at some point. I'll read for you when I get home later. What a loving family. And as we know in anime, nothing goes wrong when you have a loving family. Chop as much wood as you can. Yeah, I was already gonna do that anyway. <laughs> this kid's got spunk, hope he lives. Do that together this time. Huh. That was the nicest way of having spunk. Wow, <laughs> what warmth. Just fills your heart. You can, okay? Be safe and see you when you get back. And they lived happily ever after. <laughs> hey, Nezuko. Nezuko. Ever since Dad passed, he's been glued to your side. This kid's got influence in, fact, in this little snow village. To follow you wherever you go. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> We can eat salmon with our friends. We don't exactly have an easy life. Look at that bird! But we're happy. Now that's a bird I can get behind. When happiness is destroyed, it's always followed by the smell of blood. And they live happily ever after. Well, that's been episode one of Demon Slayer. See you guys next time. <laughs> Am I ready to go through this again? My heart has been broken how many times now doing these reaction videos. I feel like the sister thing, I'm assuming that's a sister, I didn't quite catch which one it was that he was carrying, is gonna turn into like an Alphonse Elric. Alphonse Elric. <laughs> Tanjiro, you came down the mountain on a day like today? You gracing us with your presence, Tanjiro? I'll take some more. I'm good, but thanks for fixing my sliding doors the other day. <laughs> this kid is just <laughs> king of the town. He's just leading, leading everything. I'm so glad you're here. We need to settle this town dispute. <laughs> Can you help me out here? Give it a sniff. Give it a sniff. It's a very specific request. <laughs> hey there, Tanjiro. I don't suppose you could give me a hand with Could the someone give Tanjiro a break? Could somebody give Tanjiro a break for one second? The dude's trying to work. <laughs> like, he's just trying to sell charcoal to feed his family. Can you just handle your own problems for one second? For God's sakes. When does Tanjiro sleep? <laughs> There's a Tanjiro in every village, just holding holding things together by a thread. How did it get so late? Yeah, I wonder how it got so late, well, stopping to help everyone. Out. Fix their domestic disputes and doors. On, <laughs> Leave him alone! Get inside. Oh. No, I'm... Don't argue, just get in here. Oh no. This is a nice Before gesture that will show up. not work out. We live in a world of demons. That looks amazing. A delicious anime food check. What did you mean by demons? Oh, so we don't live in a world of demons. Why does it seem like only this this dude is aware of the demons? My grandma used to say the same thing before she passed away. I guess they come from a different era. A time of relative peace after darkness. I feel like we'll be seeing Sobero again. It's always followed. You can smell blood. Uh. What happened? What's going on here? Oh my... I feel like he's gonna feel... Nezuko's the only one who's still warm! Responsible about that since he just... he wasn't around. Your big brother will save you! What, he's turning into a demon? The snow saved me. But the snow is the only reason I fell. I feel like there's a big metaphor there. Nezuko! Yeah, she's demonized. She doesn't have Nezuko Sen anymore. Yeah, she was a victim. Oh, she's still she's still going. While I was sleeping like a baby at Saburo's, you were all being brutally murdered. Yeah, as someone who's responsible for the whole town. Try not to imagine him taking responsibility for the whole thing. I have to at least save Nezuko though. But she's too strong for me to do anything. Sobrero. Just hang on! Please! <laughs> That's getting through. Oh, a demon slayer. This is a lot of danger, obviously. 
You gotta, like, yeah, protect her. Oh, damn. Who's that? Looks pretty badass. I'm getting, like, some Final Fantasy X Oran vibes from him, even though he's a lot younger. Even the clothes. Nezuko would never eat a human! You must be joking. If I hadn't gotten here when I did, she would have devoured you. He's thinking about it, though. He's on the fence. Otherwise, he would have done it already. This is something that comes up sometimes that I think shows would prefer often to shy away from when the enemies or the monsters or whatever are of human origin. You know, I think one really neat way around that is establishing that there's no hope for them. But you would imagine that if you have any doubt that that's true, it would weigh really heavily on you. Assuming you're that kind of person who thinks about those things, which this guy obviously is. It's tough to talk anyone into or, I guess, out of doing anything they don't already have doubts about. Typically, if people change their minds or hesitate, it means there's something, something in there. That's a sales thing, actually, like when I was a stockbroker. Even if people are hostile towards you, the fact that they stay on the line with you, or even better, ask questions to test you, means they're interested. This guy, I feel like, wants to be talked out of this. And I won't let her hurt anyone. I'll turn her back into a human. This is big words for something he knows nothing about. I'll hunt down the one who slaughtered my family. Just let her go. Please don't do that. It's a bigger game to be played here. Yeah, his sister right now represents everything. I'm begging you. <laughs> He's probably done it in the past and seen the results. Even if he doesn't, yeah, even if he doesn't care about the demons, he cares about the living. The weak have no rights. They don't get to make choices. All they can do is be relentlessly crushed by the strong. This sounds familiar. <laughs> Life is cruel. I could have easily just skewered the both of you and been done with it. But why didn't you? I know it hurts. I know you want to scream. Feels like he's looking at an earlier version of himself. If only I'd gotten here half a day sooner. Speaking of bearing guilt. <laughs> Don't you touch her! It's a rock? <laughs> you let your emotion drive you to charge at me. You are a fool! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but real recognizes real, right? Even this, the demon sister is like, <gasps> wow, that was a lot. Oh, he boomeranged it! You do always come back. He knew he had no way of beating me. His whole plan was to bring me down after <laughs> I knocked him out. This kid. Bigger games. Bigger games being played. Nezuko. Oh, she's protecting him. Long ago, someone else said the same thing. It was Kenshin style. Only to end up being devoured. A starving demon will eat anyone. She must have been craving a feast right from the start. Even her own brother. But she didn't do it, yeah. I wonder if... Just maybe... These two are different. Their dynamic is already sort of intriguing because of the fact that they each clearly have something that the other needs, which is just right for like a mentor-pupil thing, even though they seem similar in age. This veteran dude seems to sort of be in a rut. His world, his viewpoint is backed up by experience and knowledge. And to that extent, he's right. And there is a danger to, I already forgot his name, the main character, but it's been calcified and he's sort of been suppressing a lot of the worst elements of his life job, I guess. And so he represents newness or passion or hope or whatever, as well as obvious potential for greatness. So they each carry purpose for the other. I've had moments in my life where certain dynamics form to people I meet where for some reason I'm in the position of being like the more experienced where people sort of lean on me as an older brother figure. I have a particular friend in mind who when I met him I think I was 25, 26 and he was 17. And there's something really nice about being in that position where I can actually participate in that older brother role because it was sort of a first for me. But it was also terrifying because very specific to the context we were in, he was just a natural and insanely talented and had unlimited potential and threatened to surpass me at any any moment. But the year or two we spent hanging out in Korea was unbelievably dynamic and unpredictable. And I ended up getting just as much out of that relationship, if not more than I provided, I think. For one, just being kept on my toes like that, but also having to accept and settle into a role where I was being looked up to and trying to be worthy of that. So these two have a lot of potential as a duo. Is that some kind of muzzle? Look for an old man named Sukonji or Okodaki. When you find him, tell him Gyu Tomioka sent you. Gyu Tokoyami. Never let her be exposed to sunlight. That means we're out at night with the other demons. So she never goes back to normal. This is normal seeming. She's walking. The environment's in this. I just realized there was no, uh, there's no intro, right? There was no intro opening animation. Wait, we get an ending. Oh, I've heard this song before. Anytime I listen to anime songs, I feel like it auto-plays into this. This is gonna be one of those things where the enemy is demons, but then you find out the true enemy is man. It's always man. 
I've seen this design too, this boar thing. I wonder how much of Journey to the West influence there is in this. This looks great for a demon. And I've heard this song like a million times, weirdly, despite having never seen the show. I love the style in this ending. And then cinematic credits. But what will the village do without him? So my impression of the first episode is that it hits a lot of familiar notes, but does it in a very stylish way with what feels like a lot of potential. The main character is sort of over the top with like just how loved he is. He's just adored and loved by it all. Although there's obviously a lot of backstory to him. He's got this scar, so he's got a history, but more intriguing so far than the main character is the side characters. This guy who showed up, this FF10 Orin-like figure, has that veteran energy I like, as well as Sobero, the older guy in the hut. I feel like he'll be back. But yeah, we have the tragic backstory that launches the hero on the journey, but then also something to live for, you know, something that represents the failure that he probably has internalized from this event in the form of Alfonso Eric, I mean his sister, whose body, I mean humanity, we have to restore. And judging by the outro, I guess, it seems like there are going to be a lot of interesting figures that we cross paths with. And I'm guessing, even though I don't really have any evidence for this yet, that the demons will be well conceived. And I mentioned it was stylish. I think one of the, the standouts for me watching this first episode was just how cinematic it is. The environments are beautiful. The snow is beautiful. The shots are really dynamic. I feel like the first episode held back, but like hinted at the action that's possible. Like just a couple of the movements of the guy who showed up seemed amazing, even in just flashes. And also the music seems great. It just seems really high quality all around in terms of production. What I'm very interested to see is what the journey looks like from episode to episode. We've now gone out into the world. This kid is all potential and hope mixed with like naivety about the world. I feel like a lot of great things can take shape in the next couple episodes.